First thing I'm going to do is measure the t-shirt to check the width of the decal I want. So this is actually a child's t-shirt. Generally decals I'm going to do at about 20 centimetres and that's going to be right for this t-shirt, 20 centimetres. So we open Silhouette Studio and we have our blank mat so we want to add our image to it. So we go to top left and click on the folder icon select what you want to put um, on what you want to cut out and then click OK or you can double click that image and it'll add it to. So first thing we're going to do is before we resize that is make sure our mat and vinyl settings are the correct sizes. So we come up to the top right for the page setup, the design area setup. I cut, I'm going to cut on a piece of A4 vinyl so my media size is correct but if you need to change that if you're cutting on a smaller piece or a longer piece or you know whatever um, you can change that by clicking it and just you can either select a preset or you can click on custom and put in your exact size of your vinyl. My cutting mat is right and my machine is right so I can close that down so then we're going to resize this so if you just click on it you'll see the border come around it so I'll come up to the top and click on the lock that will just make sure that the height and the width stay in ratio whenever we change one of them. So I'm going to change the width at the top up here to 20 centimetres because that's what I've measured and that's what I want this, the decal size to be. You can see it's resized and it sort of disappears down. If you click on the centre to page icon at the top here, it will put it in the centre of the page for you, in the centre of the vinyl. Three things to remember when you're using heat transfer vinyl HTV. The first is you need to mirror everything you're going to cut out to make sure that when you apply it to your T-shirt or whatever, it isn't back to front. The second is whenever you're putting your vinyl on the mat, you're putting it down shiny side. And the third is before you apply the heat to the vinyl on your garment, you need to double and triple check. There's no spare bits of vinyl, little tiny bits, bits you haven't weeded, a border, anything at all that you don't want to press. Because as soon as you apply that heat to it, that is then stuck to the t-shirt and it is a real pain to get off again. So I always remember those three points when I'm working through um, so you don't mess it up and waste a t-shirt or vinyl. So first of all, to mirror this, click it so it's highlighted. You can see the border around it. Then we come over to the right hand side and what looks like the turtle, I think the replicate panel. Click on that and remember you can move these about to keep them open as well if you open another panel. And you can see the mirror options here. So just click on one of those and you'll see it's mirrored. You can then delete this one off. And then if we use the center to page again, it'll put it in the middle for us. I'm just gonna move it up so I can then just use that bit of vinyl and I'll be able to save the rest. Another tip here is if you want to, if you're cutting something out and it's not gonna use the whole sheet, if you put a square rectangle around it, so I'm just dragging a rectangle around it, I just went to the top left there and clicked, and you can resize it. It just means when you come to weeding, it will just leave a nice edge here at the bottom that you'll be able to use that vinyl again instead of peeling off that whole sheet and wasting any of it. So we're gonna get our mat ready with our vinyl on it. So you remove your blue cover paper, Always keep hold of that and replace it after use and it'll keep your mat cleaner for you and it won't stick to everything and be annoying. So as I said previously, HTV vinyl has two sides. One is really shiny because that's the backing vinyl or backing paper and the other, this is white, but some of it will be the same colour as the vinyl you're cutting, but you will always be able to tell, I say it's much shinier on one side. The shiny side goes down onto the mat. So we place it... I say I'm using A4 and that's what I've told the mat I'm using. So at the top of the mat, we've got the A4 settings. And so I just line it up on that, press it down. I then flip it and give it a press the other side too. Then we're going to load it into our mat and we're going to do a test cut. So when you're loading it into the mat, sorry, loading it into the machine, we line it up with the second line in, not the first long one on the portrait, you line it up with the second one along. So it's the edge of the mat that you line up, not the vinyl, you line the edge of the mat with that second line along. Just hold it and so you can feel it pressing against the two white wheels and then you're pressing the right hand, sorry, the up 
arrow and it will open that for you. So to prepare for the cutting, we then hit the send button on the right hand side. And you'll be able to see here, and it's important that you check everything that is got the red line around it, that is the cut line. So that is going to be cut. So just double check that it's all set up right and it's going to cut out. It hasn't gone just to one big image that hasn't got a cut line. So then we're going to choose our material. It comes with the Silhouette Studio, comes with lots of presets. I have found that none of these have actually worked for what I've wanted to cut, but they're a good starting point. So it's through trial and error. I now have some of my user defined ones set up and I know these work for the vinyl I use, but it is pure trial and error. But one thing you can do instead of wasting a whole sheet of vinyl is you can use the test function. So once you've got your vinyl loaded, as I've shown you, you can come to this screen and then you would click the test and that will run a test for you. So that's the machine done the test cut and so if we take it out and press the down button you can see here if I can bring it up to the light okay we can't see very clearly let's turn it around there you go you can see there on the top left hand corner it's cut a square and a small triangle out so what you do just to check that it's right if I hold it down here I'm then going to weed that and make sure that that comes out how I'd want it to. And it does. It's a nice crisp line. The um, excess vinyl comes on, comes off nice and easily. Um, and so it's easy to weed. So it means that the test, the settings for the vinyl on my machine are correct. So we're happy with how the test cut went. We know our settings are right. So we just reload the mat. And again, the second line, not the long one, the edge of the mat on the second line, hold it up, press the up, and that's your mat loaded. One thing just to be aware of, obviously where we've done the test, test cut on the top left, if your design comes right up to this top left, you might need to adjust it on your mat on Silhouette Studio to make sure that it doesn't overlap that. But now we can go back to Silhouette Studio and prepare to cut out the whole design. So we've done our test cut and we know that the settings here are all correct. One thing is if your settings aren't correct, if it's not cutting it out nicely and you need to change them. As I said, the um, inbuilt standard um, vinyl cutting or whatever you're cutting settings is the best place to start. You can then change them, but the tip is, Always go up to the like the highest force, which is 33, before changing the blade setting. So you would keep going up to here to 33 before you go to number three, and then you would start at number three and on a low force. And you just keep trying. I say it's pure trial and error, um, and nobody else's machine will be the same as yours because their blade might be new, old, or somewhere in the middle. Okay, so now we're going to cut out our decal. So again, we'll do a last double check that everything that's got the line around it is what we want to cut and we have mirrored it as well. So then we would just press send and it will send it to the machine. That's our design cut out. So now we're going to weed it and get it ready to put on the T-shirt. So we just press the down button and that will unload the mat. And then we can bring the design down here and we can get ready to weed it. Some people prefer weeding whilst it's still attached to the mat. Other people don't. Personal preference, trial and error. So this is my weeding tool. It was actually a double-ended one and I cut off one end because I only actually wanted to use this. It's just super sharp. Um, I like it. Again, different people prefer different ones. This was just from Amazon. So we pull up and then we'll pull off the vinyl we don't want for the design. As you can see, because the settings are right for cutting this vinyl, it comes off really nicely.
So when we've got it to this point where most of the vinyl that we don't want is gone, I'll then take it off the mat and bring it back down. And any areas like the inside of the letters or anything else we can take off. I use a lint roller here because um, I find it sticks to the table and then I can stick things on it. It's really useful, especially for smaller bits um, that are hard to get off the weeding tool. And then whenever the lint roller is full, you can just take that layer off and chuck it. So that's the extra bit there. So we can turn it around and make sure all the center of the letters and anything else is as we want it. So what we need to do now, I'm just going to cut round the edge here. So we say we've got that border on there. Um, so I'll just cut at the bottom first of all, then I can just remove that excess border. Because this brings us back to the point we only want on the sheet what we want to stick on the t-shirt. Otherwise, you'll have all of this, you would have this border stuck on there too. Use the lint roller as well before that sticks. This is the joy, I have to say, of vinyl. And one of the parts I hate the most is all the stickiness of it and everything. You can get yourself in a real mess really easily. So that's our decal ready to go. And one thing I've just spotted from turning it over, we've still got the test piece. So where I keep saying be really obsessive here about checking and double checking any little tiny bits. So they're going to end up on your t-shirt if not. So that's our decal ready to go onto our t-shirt. This is the setup I've got for pressing my items. I've got one of the Cricut heat mats. I've got one of the bigger ones. I found it a lot easier even when just pressing sort of A4 size decals um, that you could measure it and have the, the whole item sitting on it. And then when I've got one of the easy press, I've got the large one. Again, it works completely over an A4 size, which is the size I use most often for decals. I've turned that on and the temperature I've got is 160 and it's set for eight seconds, but my HTV just needs three seconds. Again, look at what your manufacturer of your HTV, they should have the info on their website about how long you need to press it for, what temperature, and also if it's a warm or a cold peel, which means once it's pressed, the temperature that you actually peel the backing off at. So I'm applying my decal to a t-shirt here. So I've already ironed this just with a normal iron, uh, just to make it a better look really. But then what I will do is I'll put it on the mat. This is going in the center and I'll just give it a press with the easy press, just to make sure it's dry and really flat where it's going. And then the next thing to make sure that you're going to put the decal on in the center, I fold the t-shirt in half, just make sure the shoulders line up and the neck line up. This is just so you're going to find the center of the t-shirt. So again, make sure it's super smooth, there's no lumps or bumps in it. Then you're going to get your easy press. You're not going to press down super hard, more just touching it because you don't want to really imprint that line. It's just going to be used as a guide. And then when we put the t-shirt down again, I'm not sure if you can see this on camera completely, but I can see it here. We've got enough of a line there to be a guide. I then use these. They were Amazon job again, super cheap. And they came in a set of four of adults, youths and children. I'm actually going to use the youths one on this for the children's t-shirt. And you can line it up then on the line you've just creased in the centre. And it also gives you a good guide of where you're going to put the decal on how far down for example don't trust it 100 percent um it's still better just to take a step back before you do any pressing and make sure so then you would take your decal fold it in half and line it up so again you're going to find the center of the decal here 
and just crease the top lightly and the bottom and that will give you your lines for your centre again and you're just going to match these up with the lines that you have just ironed on and then just press that down you can then take this off and it will give you an idea if that's where the placement you want it all t-shirts are different and decals are different of where the position you're going to have them so it's always a good idea to take a step back and just have a look as well and if you think that's sort of correct um, and that's going to look right something else you can do if you're not 100% sure of the positioning is get a ruler and measure from the side of the decal to the side of the item so that's 14 yeah that's absolutely dead on in the middle adjust it slightly to make sure it's straight and then the third tip that I said the third important really important thing that you're going to do before you put any heat on this is have a really good look over it make sure there's no stray tiny bits of vinyl there's no border left there's absolutely nothing on there that you don't want transferred onto the t-shirt because once you press that it's going to be on there so once you're happy with your placement and say you've double checked that there's no stray vinyl or anything you would get your easy press or whatever press you're using and you press down on it and take it off I say my vinyl says three to four seconds I like to do the eight just to be double sure what you will see whenever you've pressed is that the vinyl has gone onto the t-shirt and you'll see the pattern of the t-shirt through this vinyl is warm removal so when I peel it off I do it when it's warm and you can see here on this that you can see the sort of the bobble of the material I suppose underneath and that's it on there for you um wait for it to cool down before you do anything else and obviously if you're folding it up for your customer make sure that you don't fold the vinyl in half um, make sure you check washing instructions for the vinyl and the item and combine them and then you've got a t-shirt that's ready to go